Hey everyone, my name is Bola Shokumbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance. We are one of the largest personal finance platforms for women in the U.S. And I am super excited to be here as part of the Ask the Expert series brought to you by QuickBooks. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about some of the unique challenges I faced starting a female founded business and also the steps I've taken to navigate through those challenges and build a successful business. And I'm also going to be answering some of the questions that you guys sent in as well. So as a female founded business owner, you are likely managing other life obligations outside of just building your business. So you may have young children, you may be homeschooling children, you may have parents that you're taking care of, you're maintaining a household, and of course, you're maintaining relationships with your partner if you have one, and with friends and family members. And all of this is happening while we are all navigating through a pandemic. So me personally, I am a full-time business owner, and at the same time, as the year progressed, I had my kids home with me, and I was navigating, taking care of them, and also walking them through homeschool, as well as maintaining maintaining my relationship with my husband and my friends and family that I was not able to see. And in addition to managing your business and also managing your other life obligations, you may have experienced certain social expectations being placed upon you by friends or family or even outsiders as to what you should or should not be doing as a woman. So for me personally, I'm a wife, I'm a mother of twins, and I've definitely felt social expectations as to what I should or should not be doing as a woman on top of trying to build my female founded business and specific challenges I faced in that area as well. And in addition to that, I felt the guilt of how to best manage my personal life and my business. So it's kind of a struggle sometimes to create a sense of balance as to prioritizing when to put business first versus when to put my family or my kids' needs first. And sometimes, you know, like I said, I feel the guilt, I feel the weight of having to make those decisions depending on what I have going on in my personal life or with my business. And when it comes to social expectations, I have been told all kinds of things in terms of what people think is my place or what should be my place in society. So for example, I've been told that being a mother can be very impactful to my ability um, to be able to build a successful business. I've been told by certain people not to talk about my children, not to talk about my husband when I go to big important meetings because this can seem like I have a lot of baggage and it can in turn make it seem like I'm not capable of building a successful business. And so there's all kinds of societal expectations that people have for you. However, it's really, really important that you're clear on your why, why you want to build your business, and you're also clear on your capabilities and understanding that you have what it takes to build a successful business, regardless of what anybody else is saying or expecting of you. Despite what people have said, despite the societal expectations for me, I have created my own path on my own terms and I have built a successful business. I've been able to create what I deem as my own balance and created my own priority in terms of how I best manage my personal life obligations and my business obligations in a way that works best for me. And in order to do this, I prioritize my family time, time with my husband, time with my kids. I prioritize the big events, the important dates that my kids have coming up. And I also leverage my schedule to plan my working hours and also prioritize what's most important for me to get done in my business every single day. Day. And this could mean saying no to business requests or delaying business requests that are not urgent so I can spend time with my husband and with my kids. Or it could mean asking for help from my family or getting a babysitter so I can have focused working hours when I have a big business priority or project that I need to work on. One thing that really helps me when it comes to managing my business obligations and my personal life obligations is communicating with my partner and even with my kids about what I do, about the big projects I have coming up and letting them know when I need help. There might be times that I have a big meeting and I need my kids to be quiet for 30 minutes because I'm working from home and they're also home. And I communicate that with them in advance of my meeting so that they know that mommy has a big meeting at this time. And it doesn't always work out 
perfectly, right? But by communicating, it definitely helps with managing those personal life obligations and business obligations because by setting the expectation with my family, by involving them with what I do, they know what I have going on and they know when I need specific time to work on specific things and they know when mommy is there for them 100%. Another thing I do is I leverage tools to automate as much of my business as possible. So my calendar is a big tool that I really rely on, especially when it comes to scheduling meetings in advance and planning out my day and blocking out chunks of time. Um, we do a lot of content creation at Clever Girl Finance, and so we definitely leverage content planning and content scheduling tools to help us lay out the content we're going to be putting out over the next several weeks across different platforms. Um, I also use QuickBooks when it comes to business finances, which is really, really important. We have to stay on top of our business finances because this is foundational to business success. And at Clever Girl Finance, we use QuickBooks for tracking day-to-day -day business transactions, for reconciling our accounts at the end of the month, for issuing invoices to uh, vendors and contractors, and also just to keep an eye on the big picture of our finances, tracking our earnings for the month, for the quarter, for the year, tracking our expenses as well for that same time period, and just keeping us um, aware of how the finances are going, what our financial situation looks like um, for the business. And as my business has grown, I have built a team and learned how to delegate. And delegating can be challenging because when you start your business, it is essentially your baby and you do all the things. So you are the founder, you are the writer, you are the social content creator, you are the administrative assistant, you are everything, right? You know how to do everything in your business. However, as your business starts to grow, you will get to a point where you need to hire. And that could be contractor help, it could be part-time, or it could be full-time. And learning how to delegate um, is something that we all have to do right because you don't want to be the bottleneck that limits the success of your business and so like i said delegating can be challenging however you have to trust the fact that you have hired really good people really amazing people with great talent and let them do their job and by delegating it definitely allows me to focus on key business priorities. It gives me time to think and strategize and plan out the vision for the business. Um, it gives me time to step out and promote the business. And it also gives me time to focus on my personal life obligations as well. I also make an effort to prioritize my self-care and my mental wellness. This is such a huge deal and I cannot stress this enough. Um, just taking time out to rest, to make sure you're sleeping, to eat well, to exercise, uh, to do simple things like read a book, watch a TV show, take a walk. As a business owner, you may find yourself in the space where you feel like you just have to keep going. You're constantly working, working, working. You have all these ideas. There's all this inspiration. There's all this passion to build your business, especially in those early days. And I have been there. However, one thing that I definitely learned is that my business does not work if I personally cannot work. And I don't mean being able to work, you know, log into my computer. I mean being able to work from a mental capacity and from a personal wellness capacity. And I've definitely had situations where I've pushed myself to the limits and I have experienced burnout. And in turn, I have been out of commission for several days and in one instance, several weeks, and I just couldn't be present to run my business. And so self-care, prioritizing your mental wellness is so, so key. And that could mean making a point to go to bed early every night. When you wake up, not going directly to computer to work, but instead taking time out to work out or sit quietly with your coffee or with your tea and just find time for yourself. I know that as a mom, it can be difficult. <laughs> You know, and sometimes I will try to wake up an hour earlier before my kids wake up or stay up an hour later when they go to bed just to have that be time. And so it's all about making sure that you prioritize time for your self-care and for your mental wellness based on your schedule and in a way that works best for you. You know, the journey to building a female founded business is not always easy especially when you have life obligations, when you have kids, you know, you're just trying to 
manage all these different things at the same time, build your business. But I definitely want to encourage you and remind you that it is possible to build this business that you have in your heart. It is possible to be successful and you are not alone. You're not doing this by yourself. So definitely seek out support where you need it. If it's from your partner, if it's from your kids, if it's from family, if it means hiring a babysitter and don't isolate yourself, reach out to peers that are also building businesses, seek out mentors and advisors to guide you and very importantly go at a pace that works for you and don't give up on your dreams sometimes you may have to go slower but that still means that you're making progress and so now i'm going to answer some of the questions that you guys sent in and the first question is from fissola one and they asked how do you manage work-life balance to be honest i don't think there's any perfect path or any perfect strategy to manage work-life balance i think what's really important and what i do is prioritizing what's most important for that day or for that week um, depending on what i have going on so sometimes you know i'm just all about my family i work specific hours of the day and then i spend time with my husband with my kids with myself right and there are times when i have a really big project and i just need a few extra hours to work and that means maybe i cannot tuck my kids into bed or i cannot cook dinner that day and so i just work on prioritizing day to day and communicating when i need help to create this sense of work life balance right i think what's also important when you think about work life balance and Creating your own sense of balance is making sure, like I said earlier, that you make time for yourself. You make time to rest. That is so important so that you can work through it all. And that also you realize that building a business takes time and you're not going to be able to do it all in one day or one month. So pace yourself and give yourself time to live life outside of your business and create your schedule based on your lifestyle. So for example, you could be a mom, you could have parents you're taking care of, you could have a partner, um, you could have other kinds of life obligations and your schedule may not be the standard work nine to five and then, you know, everything else after 5 p.m. So create your schedule based on what works best for your lifestyle and then focus on prioritizing the things that are most important on a day by day basis. That can be very helpful when it comes to just laying out a sense of work life balance. So the next question is from Gabby Fontenot and they asked, how do you balance paying debts and living life when you don't make that much money? So paying off debt and living life on a low income can be really challenging. And so one of the first things I tell people to do is to get a sense of their big picture and just really understand how much debt you owe and what your expenses are in comparison to your income. And you can use this information to help you create a plan. And your plan would involve creating a strategy to pay off your debt, right? Understanding your debt and what the interest rates are and deciding whether you want to tackle your debt that has the highest interest rate first to save the most amount of money or tackle your debt that has the lowest balance and start thinking about ways that you can pay um, additional payments to your debt in excess of the minimum payment that's expected from you every single month as a way to get ahead of that debt and get ahead of those interest payments. I also tell people to look at those expenses and see if there are any opportunities for you to cut back. Are there any expenses right now that are just not essential and um, you can take this money and put it towards building an emergency account, take this money and put it towards paying off your debt or take this money and using it for other life goals. And I would also tell anyone navigating life with a low income to start thinking about ways to increase your income. What ways can you get creative to increase your income? Do you have things sitting around in your home that you don't need and you don't use that you can sell to bring in cash to put towards your savings or put towards your debt? Can you find a part-time job? Can you find a better paying job? Can you start a side hustle? It's really, really important to get creative to think about ways to increase your income because yes budgeting is great cutting back on your expenses is great however there's only up to a certain point that you can cut back on those expenses you know you're going to get to a point where you cannot cut back anymore and so the next thing you want to focus on is thinking about ways to increase your income so that you can put more money towards savings you can put more money towards paying down that debt faster and also keep in mind that by being intentional 
you are ensuring that this situation where your income is limited is only temporary, right? So being intentional to find that job, being intentional to create that debt repayment plan and act on it is really, really important as well. And then the last question is from Millennial Money Progress, and they ask, how do I get over the fear of beginning? This is such a common question and also a common fear, um, the fear of starting, the fear of beginning. And there's a lot of factors that cause this fear. There's a lot of what ifs. What if I fail? What if people think this about me? What if I waste my money? There's all these things that can lead into you having this fear of getting started. But also, you don't know what you can accomplish unless you try. And I also tell people you don't want to be afraid of failure because failure is a stepping stone on your path to success. And you can minimize your fears by creating a plan, right? So if you have this amazing business idea, you want to lay it out in a business plan and lay out things like, okay, what is my business about? Who is it for? What products and services am I going to be selling, etc.? And this will help you gain more confidence to start. And I also tell people, just get started. Take that first step. Don't worry about the 1,000 other steps you're going to have to take. Focus on that first step and then the next step. And that will also help to minimize your fear. So the fear is real. The fear is there. I am afraid every day and I have started my own business. But I always remind myself of my mission why I started my business. I always reference back to my business plans and my goals and my vision for my business. And, you know, just, just go out and do it. That's what I would say. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have found this session helpful.